Well, then we have here this holy marriage. Right, to be, to first, congratulate to Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Thomas Hughes, who began their life and, uh, wedded together in Christ today. And we read here the epistle for the Mass of the Wedding, uh, taken from St. Paul's or the Ephesians, chapter 5. Brethren, let wives be subject to their husbands as to the Lord, because the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of, is the, head of the church being himself Savior of the body. But just as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives be to their husbands in all things. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church, and delivered himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, cleansing her in the bath of water by means of the word, in order that he might present to himself the church in all her glory. And having spot and, and, and having not, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that she might be holy and without blemish. Even thus ought husbands also to love their wives as their own bodies. Even he who loves his own wife loves himself. For no man ever, no one ever hated his own flesh. On the contrary, he nourishes and cherishes it, as Christ also does the church because we are members of his body, made from his flesh and from his bones. For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, I mean in reference to Christ and to the church. However, that each one of you love also love his wife, just as he loves himself, and let the wife respect her husband. And stand for the gospel. Taking that according to St. Matthew, Chapter 19. At that time there came to Jesus some Pharisees testing him and saying, it is, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any cause? But he answered and said to him, Have you not read the, that the Creator from the beginning made, made them male and female and said for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh? Therefore now there are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. That's the words of today's Holy Gospel. And the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, Amen. When God created man, He said, Let us make man according to our own image and likeness. He made an entire world that is very beautiful. There is beauty in the stars, beauty on the earth, and all things that God created are good. But then he said, let us make man unto our own image and likeness. And therefore he took the slime of the earth and he breathed into it and created Adam, who was made from the dust, made from the humus, hence the word humility. He is made from the dust. And then he told Adam, he gave him a test. And this is the test before the test. We read later on, we read later on, that God would test Adam and Eve. But before he tested Adam and Eve, he gave a test before the test. And this was, he told Adam, I am giving you a responsibility. Go out into this beautiful world that I created, which I have made for you. I made this world for you. Now go out into this world and see its beauty. Go out into this world and name the animals. Go out into this world and take care of the garden and be the ruler of the earth. All of it is yours. And this was the test before the test. Adam went out. And he saw all the animals. And they were beautiful and good. And he saw the clouds. And all the stars. And they were beautiful and good. And everything was for him. And he came back to God. Now what is this first test? Oftentimes when you make something... Before you put it out on the road, you test drive it. I made this car to be able to drive 100 miles an hour and to stop in 25 feet. So you test it. 
Then you put it on the market. God did not test any other creature. He knew that they were perfect and good. But with Adam, he decided to give him a test. And Adam didn't even know that he was being tested. Go out and name the animals. I have said to the Father, and the Son, and Holy Ghost, we have spoken to one another, and we have said, let us make man in our own image and unto our likeness. Is man really like me? Is man really a reflection of God? More than angels who are better, more beautiful than men? More than animals? More than all the beautiful things that I have created, says God? Is he really like unto me that I'm going to attest? Adam have made all these things for you. Isn't that wonderful? He got the greatest Christmas present. He got everything. And he came back to God. What did he say? Lord, I really appreciate all the things you've given to me. But I have no creature like unto myself. He wanted something more. Let us make man into our image and likeness. If he's really like me, he will have infinite desires. Give him a million dollars. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a millionaire. All right, you got all the money in the world. It's in a bank account, an Excel spreadsheet. You got it all. You own everything. More than George Soros. More than Bill Bates. Bill Gates. We should be in the Bates Motel. But nonetheless, more than them. You own more than everybody. Is it enough? If he is of me, if he's of God, he will come back and say, I really appreciate this infinite universe. It's really big. But it's not enough. I want more. Is he really like unto God? Then he wants more. And secondly, the test. God testing his own creation. I want a creature like unto myself. If he's like me, he won't just want more. He won't just want everything. He won't just want infinite desires. But he will want even more than that. He will want to make more. He will want things to grow. He will want things to increase. He will want to take all the knowledge that's in his mind that God just gave him in his most perfect mind. He will want to take all the love that's in his heart that is a most wonderful heart, the heart of Adam. And he wants that heart to spread the love and to spread the truth, and to share it, to take that love where there is not human love, to take that knowledge where there is not human knowledge. The animals are wonderful, but they don't have the knowledge of God. And all the creatures are wonderful, and they are beautiful, and they reflect God, but they don't have the love of God in their own hearts. They're the expression of love, but they don't have love, and they don't love and therefore, the first history of man is that he came to God and he complained. This is before the fall. So wives should not be disturbed that their husbands complain. But nonetheless, he complained before the fall. And it was a holy complaint and one that made God most happy. He is like me. He wants more than just this universe. He wants more than just all the beautiful things I made for him. He appreciates it, but he wants more. He is like me. And he wants to share himself. He's not satisfied to own all the things on earth. He's not satisfied to be the richest man in the world, the most intelligent man in the world, the wisest man in every way, the one with the greatest heart, the most brave. He is the most wonderful of all men, Adam is. And he's not satisfied. And all the sons of Adam must know this. We are the sons of Adam. And one of the tragedies of the 20th and 21st century is that we try to be satisfied with too little. We're not much smarter than Judas. As Bishop Sheen used to say, the trouble with Judas is not that he betrayed Christ, but he betrayed him too cheap. He sold the Son of God for only 30 pieces of silver. How many priests have sold their priesthood for only a few years of pleasure? 
How many men have sold all their birthright before God for a few years of sin? The trouble is not that we have sold God. We sold him too cheap. God made us to desire more. More than all the things that he created in this universe. And he created Adam. And he wanted to see Adam. Adam, are you a real man? Because if you're a real man, you will be like me. I am perfectly happy in eternity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We don't need anything else. But we want it more. Therefore, out of absolutely nothing, we made an infinitely large universe and an infinite number of beautiful things because that's what God does. Are you a real man? Did I really make you a man? Then if you are a man, come back and show me that you are a man. And Adam did. He came back to God and he said, I want more. And I want to share what is in my mind outside of my mind. I want to share what's in my heart outside of my heart. And that's what makes a man a man. We must understand that love is a manly thing. Love is that which proceeds from a man's heart. And if a man does not pour love out, then there is no love in the world. Remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Greater love than this, no human being has. No one has, male or female, except this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. It's the most beautiful thing for a girl to lay down her life. It's most wonderful. So many of our martyrs and saints have done that. But there is no greater thing than a man that lays down his life. If it was great for a woman to lay down her life, then the Blessed Virgin Mary would have laid hers down. No, she united her heart to his. And she helped him lay down his life. And that's what a good wife is supposed to do. And men should remember that when their wives nag them to death. The good wife helps her husband die. And that is exactly what the Blessed Virgin Mary did. She prepared her son for death. And she stood by while he died. Then why is she the greatest of all the wives? St. Augustine says, when you consider what happens upon the Holy Cross, it is nuptials, it is marriage. For there is a most sacred union between the man and the Holy Mother Church. And what is going to happen in this marriage bed of suffering, says St. Augustine, there will come children... There will come life. We have a world that is tragic today because there are no men in it. Now when God created woman, that most beautiful creature called Eve, what did he make her to be? The recipient of love. The receiver of gifts. She was made to be the recipient of love. Man was made to love. And a woman was made to be the recipient of love. And she's supposed to go to the world looking for lovers. Women today are looking for men. They can't find them. Because they are selfish pigs. They are not lovers. A man is a lover. A real man is a lover. And what does a man do? He looks for that which is outside of himself. And he searches for that a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. He's going to leave his home. He's going to go out. As Adam was sent out by God. And he is going to share his faith, the only true faith. He's going to share his knowledge of what the real world really is. He's going to share his heart. And he's going to pour his heart where there is not a heart. As the great St. Francis de Sales said, when you travel through life, you will find that there is not love. Where there is not love, put love, and there you will find love. This is the duty of the man. We are meant to travel with our hearts and go from place to place where there is not love. 
and then put love there. Now, God's world was most beautiful before there was original sin. But God himself wanted more. And he wanted that to be expressed in Adam. So Adam came to the God the Father and said, I love you, God, but I want more. And then what happened? Adam was put to sleep and he rested. In his sleep, from his side came Eve. And God gave a command. Increase and multiply and people the earth. I have made a world that is beautiful and is an expression of divine love. But I want lovers to be everywhere in this world. I want those that know me, those that love me, and those that serve me to be in every single place on earth and to carry my most divine heart to every place on earth. This is what I want. And it is going to be carried through Adam. And Adam had infused knowledge. He had no ignorance. But he didn't know enough. So there was something Adam had to do in every day of his marriage. Even before the fall. He had to walk with God. Every day he would go and he would walk with God. And this is the duty of the man. The man must walk with God. And he must bring his woman with him. But nowadays, what happens? We say that prayer and walking with God, that's a womanly thing. And for those that are ignorant. But it is wisdom that makes us walk with God. It is wisdom that makes us go with him each day. Knowledge makes us want to be more and more with God because he's the source of all truth. And therefore, Adam every day walked with God until one terrible day. He did not show up for the appointments. How are we going to solve the problems in the world today? There must be Catholic marriages. And that requires a man. We don't have men today. Men must come back onto this earth. Men who have hearts. Men who have noble desires. Men who are ready to sacrifice themselves and lay down their life for their friends. And who are our friends? Everyone on earth. Every creature of God. God the Father came down to this earth. And what did he do? He sent his son down to this earth. And what did the son do when he came down to this earth? He saw that this earth was filled with hatred. He saw it was filled with heresy. He saw it was filled with lies. And every manner of evil. It was the earth of Joe Biden's. That was the earth that he wanted down to see. An earth filled with the greatest of evil. What did he do? He looked upon that evil and he poured out his heart. We need Catholic families. We need Catholic marriages in which the man is going to pour out his heart. He is going to pour out his heart that there might be the spreading of the knowledge and love of God throughout the entirety of the world. This is what must be. It is what is most necessary. And in order to do that, we must be crucified and we must die. We must lay down our lives. This is the trouble today. A man is not willing to lay down his life. He won't lay down the life of anybody else. That's no problem. But he is not willing to lay down his own life. He is not willing to truly sacrifice because love demands sacrifice. Love creates sacrifice. Adam was told by the serpent through Eve, if you eat of this forbidden fruit, you shall be like unto God with the knowledge of good and evil. What are we supposed to know only? Good. So when we see evil, what does the man do? How can I take this evil and clean it away and replace it with good? How can we take these people that believe lies and fill their minds with truth how can we take that which is wicked and fill it with goodness? For we are meant only to see goodness. We are meant only to see truth. We are meant only to see God and all things. But we look at the world around us and he's not there. And our Lord Jesus Christ stood high upon that cross. And on that cross, what did he do? He looked down over the entire earth. 
He looked upon the entire earth. And he saw that it was not good. But what did he say before he went to that cross? And he taught his apostles, his priests. If I be lifted up, I will draw all things unto myself. If you be lifted up on a cross, then you can be a magnet. But if we are not lifted up on a cross, we will not be a magnet. If we're lifted up on a cross, we can see the world from a very high point, And we can see all things, great and small. But if we're not on the cross and we're down on the ground, we can only see a few feet around us. And our vision is weak. What about this time of crisis? You get married in a war. You get married when there's not a bright future. Are they ever going to own a house? Maybe a hut? Maybe a teepee, those little bitty tents? Are they ever going to have a stable job? Stable jobs are taken from us by the communist world and by government that's taken us over. Houses are being taken from us. The world's getting more ugly. How do we conquer it? We say a prayer called the Our Father, that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Without that, there's no point in saying the second part. Give us this day our daily bread. Do you want daily bread, Mr. Hughes? Do you want daily bread? I like daily bread. We all want daily bread. Do you want daily bread? Speak to your Father who is in heaven every day. And that means say the Holy Rosary, but that's not enough. In Cobilibus Vestris Combungimini, it says in the Psalms, in your bedrooms with compunction of heart, think of the things of God. We have to talk to God in the night. A man must talk to the God of the night. That's what our Lord did. He spent the night in prayer and the day in work. But there must be a talking to God. When you're walking, when you're at the workplace, talk to God. Oh Lord, I love you with all my heart. Please protect my family. Let me not be selfish. Because remember that first test of God. Is Adam selfish? Imagine you gave a modern boy the whole world. He wouldn't ask for someone to share it with. But God was asking, is this man really a man? Then he will want to share his good. He will want to spread it. That's what he's going to want. And Adam was a great and wonderful man, though he sinned. And Eve was our wonderful mother, though she sinned. But they were replaced by the new Adam and the new Eve. And the love of the new Adam and the love of the new Eve is so infinitely greater, so much more wonderful, that we repeat the words of the author of the Exultet that we sing every Holy Saturday. It was a holy monk over a thousand years ago said, what am I going to do when I go to heaven? I'm going to go to Adam and say, Oh, Felix culpa. Oh, happy fault. Adam, I'm so glad that you committed that original sin. Because of that sin, I have seen Christ. And had you not committed that sin, I should not have seen Christ. So I'm happy that you committed that sin. Oh, certe in the tesori picati ade. Almost certainly necessary sin of Adam. Are we going to be all upset with Adam when we get to heaven? Look for the guy without the belly button. We are not going to be all upset when we get to heaven. Almost necessarily sin, the most necessary fault of Adam. And we will see how Adam looks so much like Jesus Christ. Father tell us to be identical twins. If you see Adam and Christ standing side by side, the new Adam would be an identical twin of the old one. Identical twins. But one only man. The other, the man God. We will not be so angry with Adam. And Adam and Eve, when they committed that terrible sin, what did they do for the next 900 years? They wept. 
They were sorry for their sin, and they never sinned again. And they were united in love, and united in faith, and they had one hope. And that one hope was that one of their grandchildren, many years later, would fix all of their problems. Did they doubt that there would be a new Adam? Though they would never see him in their lifetimes? They never doubted. What is marriage? It is a union in one flesh of a man and his woman that there might be a continuation of knowledge and love of God upon the earth. We are meant to make children for heaven. Can they be made in a battle? Oh, yes, they can. You want to survive the coming chastisement, survive the difficulties of a communist America if Biden's able to pull off this most wicked steal of the election. Can you survive it? No, it can be survived, provided we walk with the Father every day and say, hallowed be his name. And with all our hearts, that's where love comes from. Consider those words, thy kingdom come. How did Jesus Christ say those words the first time he taught us that prayer? When you speak to the Father, you say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. That's how he taught us to pray. And we repeat those words in every Mass. You hear the priest sing, Pater Noster, Quies in Celis. No one says it with him. Only the priest. Because every time you go to Mass and you hear the Pater Noster sung or said by the priest, you are learning again. And you're learning again. And we're learning again. And again and again. That most holy prayer which must enter into our being. It must be the center of a holy marriage. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. We have to desire it. We want the entire world to be Catholic. The entire world to know, love, and serve God. We want the Holy Father to know, love, and serve God. Because he doesn't know him. He doesn't love him. doesn't serve him right now. But we need him to know, love, and serve God and obey the Blessed Virgin Mary and consecrate Russia to the Mac heart of Mary. And one day he shall receive the grace to do that. And we want all of those in Russia and all of those in every part of the world to know, love, and serve God that the kingdom may come to every planet, to every city, to every nation, to every family, and every individual person upon this planet. We want the kingdom to come. And we want his will to be done. Where? On earth. Right here in this chapel. Right here in this family. Right here in this seminary. Right here in all this land of America. In this entire planet. We want it to be done on earth like it is done in heaven. And part of that being done is to increase and multiply. To desire with all our hearts to increase and multiply. But this can't come unless we die. For unless the seed dies, says our Lord Jesus Christ... It remaineth itself alone. That's the most tragic thing. How many millions of souls today are living alone? Alone in their houses, alone in their apartments. Having a TV to make noise for them and a cell phone to keep them busy. And they are alone. It is not good for man to be alone. What about those hermits? Are they alone? Absolutely not. St. Mary Magdalene was the most wonderful of the hermits. Every day, she would climb in, a, in an ecstasy up into heaven, and she would commune with all the angels. The angels are by the billions. They outnumber men. She spoke with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then she would come down to earth and go to sleep. She didn't have time for other people because she spent her whole time in the community of heaven. The hermits are not alone. They are with God and with the angels and with the saints. It is not good for man to be alone. Who is the most lonely man on earth? It's quite simple. The man that is in mortal sin. The man that does not have faith. The man that does not know, love, and serve God. That is the most alone man in the world. 
And we want to remove this loneliness. We want it to be taken away. For it is not good for man to be alone. And if we do know, love, and serve God, we want to spread that love. We priests of the Holy Roman Church, we're not allowed to marry girls. Why is that? We got better girls. We don't need a girl of this world. We have our Holy Mother of the Church. We have the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we are meant to be fathers. And what is a father? He is one that increases and multiplies. He's one that brings the knowledge and love of God to where God is not. And so we have so many more children. So many more children than a father of a family. But it is fathers that are needed to solve the problems of the world today. We need fathers. Fathers that are men and fathers that love. And when a father with love goes through the world, Satan is defeated. Satan is terrified. The Holy Father in Rome... Francis, he doesn't understand the power of the love that is inside of his heart. If only he can take that priestly heart and turn it to his priesthood. If only he can take the fatherhood of his papacy, he is called Papa. Why do we call him Papa? It is a familiar word of those who are the closest to us in fatherhood. He is called Papa. And what is it that makes a papa a papa? That he loves his children. That he does the good for his children because he loves them. And one day he shall receive the grace to obey our Holy Mother in Heaven and consecrate Russia and take care of his children and hand over the faith to them. This is what a papa must do. He is the Holy Father. And our trouble today is there aren't Holy Fathers. Let us pray for the Holy Father in Rome that he become a true father again. And the fathers of dioceses, who are the bishops of the church. And the fathers of uh, parishes. And the fathers of families. That they learn what love is and carry love into a loveless world. Our world is without love because it does not have men that are carrying love inside of them. It doesn't have men that are ready to die. Greater love than this no man hath. No one hath than that a man lay down his life for his friends. And when our Lord Jesus Christ would lay down his life, you apostles will follow me. You will also become martyrs. But not today. Today I go. Today I die. And a real man wants to die alone. Alone in death. United with all others in life. Let us have the heart to be real fathers. We need fathers This is most necessary. And then from the side of Adam came that most beautiful creature called Eve. And she is simply called the mother of all the living. That's what Eve means. The mother of all the living. And what is a girl supposed to be? A mediatrix of life. She doesn't need to carry a sword. She carries a baby in her womb. And that is what conquers Satan. How did the Holy Mother conquer Satan. An angel came to her and said, are you willing to be a mother? And she said, fiat, let it be done. And when she accepted to be mother, Satan was vanquished. Heaven entered earth. Hell was wiped out because a girl said, I will be mother. Fiat miki secundum verbum tuum. I will be mother. Marriage union between man and a woman, that there might be children, and these children would be all the children that God sends. There is no birth control. There is no abortion. But all the children God sends. And why have these children? To send them out of the world to conquer it. To send them out of the world and bring Christ to it. To prepare for the kingdom and the victory of Christ, which is coming soon. This time of crisis will end. All sorrowful times come to an end. This sorrowful time we right now is going to come to an end. It's a good day to marry. To marry in Christ. And to have little children, though the world is most wicked. And let these children bring goodness and truth and knowledge and love of God to the world. And remember the principle foundation of marriage. Mr. Tommy and being a husband. Our Father, who art in heaven. Say those words every day. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And by the way, if you have any extra time, give us this day our daily bread. You can use a couple of cheesecakes and pizzas right now. Hmm? Give us this day our daily bread. That will come. And let it lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let's have a holy marriage. God bless you in this marriage. And also that all Catholic marriages must remember you're united in Christ. A most wonderful union, like in the union between Christ and his church. Let this be the marriage union of everyone that is married. And remember, let the husbands be Christ and seen as Christ by their wives. Let the wives be the church and seen as the church by the husbands. And then we'll bring back peace and order to our world. Lord, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And also, during the Mass, during the Canon of the Mass, we have the ancient nuptial blessing. But on the day of the marriage, uh, Tommy is not blessed. Only the Christian is blessed on the day of the marriage. All blessings pass through the bride. Remembering many things, one of course, of course, is that Adam was not blessed and not, did not feel happiness until Eve was created from his side. And also, our Lord Jesus Christ died in the greatest of sorrow, and he experienced only joy when the church came into being and children were born in our holy church. Hence, there will be no blessings given to Mr. Thomas, none will be given to him yet, no none are on the list of the things to do today. The blessings all pass through the bride. And in the Mass, the Canon of the Mass, we turn to the Canon of the Mass to do the nuptial blessing of the Old Testament of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or of, of Rebecca and uh, Rachel and Sarah upon the bride in the Canon of the Mass. At the end of the Mass, a second nuptial blessing. It will turn around and the, couples will be, the couple will be kneeling for those two nuptial blessings. And then, uh, and then the conclusion of the Mass.